Hello ladies and gentlemen, Chris here with another project. Today we are looking into upgrading my laser engraving rig. Although my current 2 watt diet laser works fine for engraving wood, it leaves something to be desired in the speed department. So clearly we need more power in order to fix that. In terms of lasers, there are basically three technologies you can go with. Most conventional laser cutters and engravers use CO2 laser tubes. These are generally the most powerful kind, but also expensive and hard to set up. Major problems with them in my application are the glass tubes and the complicated setup of all the mirrors along with the focusing head. I'd be surprised if a setup like this could survive longer than a week in my workshop. In addition, there are also some minor safety concerns with having an unshielded laser beam running along two axes of my machine. So that option is out for the time being. There are also fiber lasers which are widely used for marking purposes in industry. They come in power levels from about 20 to 50 watt. Unlike the tube lasers, this type is fairly easy to integrate. Unfortunately, these units are even more expensive than the CO2 lasers. So that leaves us with the poor man's option. A more powerful diet laser. I had a look around AliExpress. As of now, the most powerful diet laser I could find supposedly provides 15 watt of peak power and 8 watt of continuous light output. I bought this unit complete with power supply and a set of laser safe glasses for about 180 US greenbacks. Although personally I wouldn't trust my eyesight to those glasses. A few weeks later the package showed up. On first inspection everything looked as described. Although the chintzy wires on the power supply are not really confidence infusing, but apart from that the rest seem to be put together alright. I already printed a new quick change mount for this diode. After finding a few of these tiny little M3 screws, I assembled the laser head. Finally, I soldered the fitting connector to the thing and swapped the power supply. Now let's see if that contraption works. Like my old diode, this one has an adjustable lens for focusing the laser. This means that we need to fiddle around a bit in order to hit the focus as good as possible. If my old diode is anything to go by, the quality of those lenses is pretty terrible. Therefore, it is possible that a version with a fixed focus distance would give us better results. But let's see what we can do with the version we got. In order to validate the focal point, I created a small G-code program that simply made some lines in different C heights above the object. After running the code on the machine, I had a closer look at the resulting part. Picking the focal distance according to the thinnest line on the part should give us the best possible results. With the setup out of the way, we are good to go for proper testing. All tests will be done with my logo in two variants, one being a filled-in version for engraving tests and the other one being an outlines-only version for the cutting tests. Although at this point I am not too confident that we will do too much of heavy cutting work with this setup. I created the G-code file for those tests using an Inkscape plugin I made for that specific purpose. If you are interested in that, check out the GitHub repo linked below. As a baseline, I'll operate the laser at full power and use a feed of 1000mm per minute. 
depending on the material, I'll lower or increase the feed directly on the machine or run multiple passes. The first thing I wanted to try is a few sheets of paper. Since there is not a whole lot of reason behind doing the engraving test, I went straight to the cutting test. Running the G-code with the laser on full power, it only managed to cut through two and a half sheets of paper. That's not very promising right from the start. The next material to test is wood. In this case I used 3mm thick plywood. This stuff is not very dense, so I figured it will give us a best case scenario for engraving and cutting. Running the engraving benchmark at full power resulted in a very deep engraving. For doing real engraving work, the power level should be re reduced significantly though. I think something around 30% would be more than enough. It should also be possible to turn up the feeds a bit. According to this result, it seems feasible that we can cut through this material. So I loaded up the second G-code file and reduced the feeds significantly. After the first pass, it seems that we didn't quite cut through all the way. After running two more passes, the result looked like this. As you can see, it kinda cut the material. But if you need to use a machine like that for cutting, you probably should invest in a solution using a CO2 laser source. In order to see how the setup performs on a worst case scenario, I repeated the engraving tests on a piece of particle board. This material contains quite a bit of glue, which prevents the laser from removing a whole lot of material. As you can see, it did a good job at engraving the material, but there is not a lot of depth to that engraving. Maybe something like half a millimeter. I also gave transparent plastic foil a go. Did not turn out too well though. The major issue is that the material is burning and melting along the cutting edges. I guess you could get a halfway decent result if you fiddle long enough with the power and feed rate. Also, make sure that you have a fume extraction device if you ever try something like this. If the smell of the fumes is anything to go by, inhaling too much of them will cost you at least a few years. Another material to test is leather. Engraving turned out quite well, but you have to account for the deformation due to the heat from the laser. Cutting on the other hand is not possible. You also need to deal with the fumes on this material, since the whole shop had a scent of burnt skin to it for hours. For testing if steel is an option, I prepared a sample. On one side I put a layer of metal primer and on the other I left it blank. Engraving the coated side left us with a decent result. It removed the paint cleanly. For using that method in a project, you would need to give it a clear coat afterwards, of course. But that could be useful down the road. As expected, we did not have much luck engraving the other side. The laser did not even leave a mark. Running the test on a blank piece of aluminium showed mixed results. The laser left faint marks on about 70% of the part. On the rest of the engraving the laser did not leave a scratch. But I guess with proper surface preparation and multiple passes it might be possible to make that diet work on aluminium. By the way, I reduced the feed to about 200 mm per minute to give us a chance. So you will need to be patient for engraving this material. Painting the material first would be an option though. The next material under test is stainless steel. As with the previous try, I reduced the feed to 20% and did two passes. Although the first pass already marked the material, the second pass just increased the contrast slightly. But compared with carbon steel and aluminium, the result is promising. Although this upgrade did not quite do everything I hoped it would, it was worth the investment in my opinion. Having that bit more power on hand will help me save a fair bit of time on future engraving projects. Thanks for watching.